and welcome. I am Amarachi Vani. Tonight, armed bandits stormed government girls' secondary school in Zamfara State, abducted at least five people, attempt to gain access to students' hostel foils. House of Representatives raised concerns over what it terms worsening insecurity across the country, say so executive not doing enough to check space of killings. Court adjourns till May 8th, a hearing of appeal by the PDP candidates in the 2018 Ocean State Governorship election. Ademola Adeleke in the case of alleged certificate forgery against them. And US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi accuses the country's Attorney General of lying about Special Counsel Robert Mueller's report on Russia's alleged election meddling in 2016. On business news tonight, IMEX asks Nigeria's economic and policy makers to focus on a dual approach to infrastructure, policies and energy provision for more economic inclusion. On sports news tonight, Tamfra Primary School, Ebutemeta and the Jewel School Egbeda emerged the biggest winners on the opening day of the Lagos preliminaries of the 2019 Channels International Kids Cup. And from Abuja, Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amechi, promises to end a papa gridlock with completion of Lagos Ibadan Rail project by the end of the year. An attempt by armed bandits abducts students from the Government Girls Secondary School in Moriki area of Zamfara State has been foiled, although they succeeded in kidnapping six other people. A correspondent reported the attackers entered the school on Wednesday night through the back fence. They were, however, repelled by a combined team of police and civilian JTF who prevented them from gaining access to the students' hostels. According to the chairman of Zrumi local government area, Awa Moriki, the council authorities, in conjunction with the school, conducted a head count of students and none was missing. The principal of the school, Mrs. Halima Ibrahim, appealed to authorities to assist them with a fence to prevent bandits from gaining access. The uh, uh, driver and his wife, then the cook from the kitchen, and one of the uh, female cook, they kidnapped her children, three of them. That's making about six? Six. That is the male cook and the female cook, children, three, three of them, about three. The situation was, is relatively calm. Uh, we were able to now get military that have been deployed to the area and uh, they have taken control of the situation. Um, unfortunately, the information given by one of the anonymous caller that uh, students were being kidnapped uh, raised a lot of uh, fear. Parents trooped to the school as early as six, and uh, uh, myself and the principal were able to organize assembly and with the staff of the school. We took a roll call, so, and uh, we found out no student was taken. Meanwhile, in what turned into an emotional debate, Lawmakers in the House of Representatives have condemned the worsening security situation in the country. They've also invited President Mahmoud Buhari to appear before the House on the matter. In a debate that followed a motion by Representative Ahmed Safana from Katsina, some of the lawmakers described Nigeria as a failed state and condemned the lack of response on the part of the executive and security agencies. Our correspondent, Larry Nassisi, reports. I put the question. It's a solemn day in the House of Representatives as lawmakers spend a large part of the plenary session considering the security situation in the country. The debate commenced when a lawmaker from Katsina State raised a motion of urgent public importance on the attacks on kidnapping taking place in his constituency. That the recent spate of the said attacks on members of my constituency has reached an alarming stage as the perpetrators of this deadly act act con continuously kill innocent persons in my constituency and set their home ablaze while defenseless men and women are abducted 
to a known destination. The views that follow paint a painful picture. It's like the whole of the north. Yes, in the south, east, southwest, you have Kidabi and everything, but it looks like the whole of the north is taken over by, I won't call them by this, I won't call them terrorists, I will say the failure of our governance. People need solution to this issue of insecurity first. Mr. Security, Mr. Speaker, our people cannot go to market, village markets today. So trading has collapsed. The issue of social interaction has collapsed because people can no more longer go attend funeral. Mr. Speaker, where are we going? Mr. Speaker, I cannot go to my village and sleep. I cannot go to my village and spend a night as I'm speaking to you. For the last one year, wallahi, I can't go to my village and sleep. I feel very unsecure. And this is where I find myself. Mr. Speaker, it is terrible. It is terrible. We have to do something about it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The lawmakers call for decisive steps to be taken to address the issues. I believe that we must start to have proper conversations, not continue to talk about the effects of the problem. But unless we have proper conversations about population, population um, control, education, human resource development, and arrest in a way that disincentivizes Nigerians from continuing to do these things. Unfortunately, this House is always going to have these conversations and continue to seek intervention. Mr. Speaker, let's tell ourselves the truth. Nigeria is becoming a failed state. The time has come that a spade should be called a spade. Action should be taken. Some people whose jobs is to secure the lives of Nigerians and they're not doing it, they should be shown the way up. And not only that, they should also be even be prosecuted because there is negligence uh, on their own part. We are just doing operation on TV. I don't, I don't, I don't see where if uh, uh, security agencies are going to conduct operation, they, they, go, they go to on, on TV telling people that and it's just a mere show up. Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues, Mr. President has to stand up and wake up and do the needful. A proposal seeking to declare a state of emergency in the northwestern region is, however, rejected by the lawmakers. But another amendment sails through. Amendment that the president should be invited to address the National Assembly on security situation all over the country and measures being taken by the government to solve the problems. And I'll put the question, those in favor of the motion say aye, aye. those against it say nay. Aye. The ayes have it. The lawmakers are urging the federal government to aye. declare a state of emergency in the federal constituency under attack as an immediate step to address the challenges in the area. Lanray Lassesi, Channels Television News. Staying with the issue, the former governor of Sokoto State, Malam Atahiru Farawa, is also blaming the prevailing insecurity in the country on poverty. He's also asking the federal government to change its strategy in addressing the numerous security challenges. The former governor, who was speaking at a news conference in Abuja, describes the spate of insecurity as worrisome, adding that it has affected the nation's economy. This started from both Koram and North East. Now it starts changing. Before, they are just shooting people now. Then they are shooting and also receiving ransom. I asking 100 million, 50 million naira. This 100 million naira that they are given, they are going to buy arms with this money they are collecting. Maybe they are only taking 10% of the money they receive. If they got to 400 million naira, they only take 10 million naira for the social. This in the 90 million naira will go to weapons. But the question is, which routes are these weapons coming from? Talking about insecurity, a rather grim picture of the situation across the country has been painted by the acting Inspector General of Police, Muhammad Adamu, during the quarterly Northern Traditional Rulers Council meeting, which took place in Kaduna on Tuesday, April 30. According to the acting police chief, a total of 1,071 people were killed, 685 others kidnapped in different parts of the country in the first quarter of this year alone. The killings were more pronounced in the north with 767 deaths, with the northwest region topping the list with 436. While the north central recorded 250 deaths, the south-south region recorded 130. Zamfara State tops the list with 203 deaths. The troubled state also recorded the highest number of kidnap cases with 281 victims in 2019.
Let's discuss the issue further now. Being joined on the News at 10 from our Abuja studio by the Chairman, House Committee on Police Affairs, Mr. Lawal Abubakar. Thank you for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you very much. The security situation in the country, in most parts of the country, especially in the north, is becoming alarming. What do you make of this? Um, well, the issue of uh, insecurity is, uh, right, uh, like you rightly said, is becoming alarming. And uh, that is why the House of Representatives today, as a responsible and responsive House, came up with uh, a motion on urgent public importance and with a resolutions also to declare a state of emergency at the interim in uh, the area of Safana, Basari, and also to invite the President of the Federal Republic as a Commander-in-Chief to brief the House and then inform the nation the measures that they intend or he intend to take so as to put this to a stop. As the chairman of the House Committee on Police, do you think that police is doing all, it, all that's required and all it can to tackle this problem? I mean, you've heard your colleagues in the House I say there really is no security in the North. Well, um, in all honesty, I cannot say they are not performing their duties as enshrined under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and also under the Police Act and other laws. Uh, but the issue is that um, at the moment their best is not good enough to this country because uh, of the alarming rate of kidnap, uh, killings here and there. Um, but I'm not holding brief for the Nigerian police. Um, but as a matter of fact, I could remember the House invited the service chiefs last year to brief uh, the House on the issue of insecurity. And not long ago, maybe about uh, two weeks or three weeks, there was a joint um, referrals with the Committee on um, Oversighting DSS or rather Security and Intelligence Committee. And um, the military were there, the police were there. They met, um, known to the committee, uh, their constraints, what they have been doing. Um, I believe that is a strategy that I don't have to come on air and start uh, talking about it. But uh, by and large, uh, in all honesty, we need the police to sit up to their responsibilities. If uh, there is anything that is inadequate, like uh, funding or the equipment, I think the federal government should provide so that um, the responsibility of any government as enshrined in the Constitution is the protection of lives and property. And if such a thing cannot be met, then um, I think uh, we have some reservation in all honesty. Do you see a commitment on the part of the police? Uh, the police boss himself has already uh, uh, itemized or written out um, the number of uh, killings that have occurred in the country in just this first quarter alone. And you're looking at these figures and you're saying these are Nigerians who have died for doing absolutely nothing, just living their lives. Uh, and, you know, these challenges have come upon them and they're no more here today. Do you take them to task about what their responsibilities are? And do you see any commitment, you know, going forward? Well, um, uh, like I said, um, their base is not good enough. And at least I must admit that. But uh, if you look at even today, the, the police boss, that is the acting inspector general of police, has redeployed some uh, commissioner of police uh, and some other officers in the office of uh, DSS, sorry, National Security Advisor, as a strategy in seeing that actually he placed square peg in a square hole so that at least um, this thing can be put to a stop. 
but um, in all honesty, um, he came out with an, a statistics of killings, kidnap, and what have you, which he, I think he is uh, being honest to the country to come out and admit that. But uh, we want him to match his word with action to ensure that um, uh, Nigerians can go to sleep with two of their eyes closed and also their properties are well secured. So I think that is the responsibility, their primary responsibility and also the primary responsibility of the federal government. And hopefully they're listening. Thank you again, Mr. Lawa Abubakar for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. In part two after the break, two people killed following a clash in Yeskwa community of Karu local government area in Nasawa State.